this is Gerd Leonhardt. Welcome to another edition of Meeting of the Minds. Today I have with me from Sydney, Australia, Ross Dawson, futurist, author, strategist and a good friend. Some of the massive trends that are shaping our world. I think one is that just we will be more and more and more connected. Everything, everywhere, in all ways, data being able to flow. Another really critical one is the interfaces between man and machines, the ways in which humans and machines starting to merge. They're getting the technologies through the thought interfaces, through all of the current ways which we can grow. But on a business level, one of the most important themes is what I you know, call distributed value creation. So instead of organizations being creating value and then being able to uh, sell things and you know, create products and services and send out invoices and so on, we're seeing where value has been created across organizations, across uh, individuals, across boundaries of all time, of all place. And so this is where we're starting to get the mechanisms to be able to say, well, who has created the value and how can that value then be allocated? So this is part of this economy of individuals. The unit of value creation in the economy today is no longer the organization, it is the individual. So these are some of the important trends which I'm seeing in the world moving forward. So some of the key trends I, I see for the next, say, 10 years uh, include this one that I think we're going from this idea of uh, companies or, or, or countries or people being empires to being networked. So the idea is that it's basically what's happening now is that you can't be successful as a business if you're a monopoly. And, and until now, that was entirely possible. Look at the music companies or, or countries, for that matter. As China is finding out, you can't own everything and still prosper by connecting with others. You know? It's basically become an interdependent world, not an independent world. And this is a huge issue, for example, for Switzerland here where I live. Uh, you have to be interdependent now. And so part of that is, of course, the, the technology is along the consumerization of IT, that everybody has this massive computing power available now. But also then you have trends like the Internet of Things, where you're essentially creating connective networks of sensors, of traffic lights, of cars, of, of smartphones, of, of, uh, of thermostats and all these things, which creates potential for huge surveillance uh, schemes and, and fears of that. But it essentially forces us to hyper-collaborate rather than hyper-compete. Uh, and I think that basically spells the end of capitalism in the same way that we know it. Because capitalism is based on me having more and you having less, uh, because the pie is limited. So the future is, in my view, is going to be a larger pie, a more lateral development, right? so that basically we can have scenarios where we all gain something, but I, I can't own all of it myself. And so this is uh, part of my forthcoming book, From Ego to Eco, where I'm talking about the, uh, how that is forming a new paradigm of capitalism, which has been called sustainable capitalism or natural capitalism, or whatever you want to call it, but not this idea of profit and growth at all costs. And you can see that everywhere uh, as a paradigm in the, in the car business, the banking business, and of course politics. So those are some of the key trends. You know, most of it is, of course, influenced by technology, which influences how, how we live and how we actually interact. I think one of the other major trends beyond the technology trends is the social trends. And in a way, if we distill all of the social trends, it is of increased expectations. People expect more. They expect greater opportunity. They expect the uh, excellence in everything around them. They expect to be able to use their sensors and have greater sensory refinement. They expect education. They expect the... Uh, uh, have media and have access to things at all times. They expect freedom. So no, in no way are those expectations ever going down. Those expectations are always increasing. And that is helping to drive the combination of the tech exponential technologies and these greater expectations together, merging to create a world where there will certainly be disappointment of those expectations, but also those expectations driving changes in social uh, structure, changes in governments. Uh, and uh, political parties, and also absolutely shifts in the, how we use technologies and how we can apply them. Yeah, I, I think that one of the key trends for the next 10 years will also be the fact that uh, this idea of uh, consumerism, you know, our consumption driving economies, and that we all want more and faster and better, and, and we all want to be Americans in the end, uh, <laughs> this idea is essentially evaporating because what happens when we do this essentially is that we're using up all of the resources that were already used in other places before in creating this giant ballooning thing 
that can't possibly actually be true for seven or eight or, b or nine billion people. We, are, we can't all be homeowners. So part of that is going to lead to what I call asset lightness, that we're doing stuff like, you know, we're renting stuff rather than owning it. Uh, we have uh, virtual working relationships, we have uh, uh, telepresence commuting, and we can live in, in spaces that have a lot smaller footprint, uh, which reduces ownership, essentially. So our economy in 10 years cannot be driven by consumption, because consumption eventually either will consume all of it, right, or we're running out of resources to, to support the consumption. For example, if 8 billion people have tablets, all the precious materials we need, you know, the, the, uh, the actual components of these devices don't even exist. We, we can't make that many devices. So we're depleting stuff and I think eventually that means that something has to be done to either invent something that, that sidesteps it, huh? but also changes our consumption patterns. For example, shared cars, which are a different consumption patterns, and uh, shared armies, rather than having armies for each country, you know, you have a, a, a global military and, and things like that. So that is sort of a, a trend that I see is going definitely going to happen in 10 years. So good, of, of all of these uh, emerging trends, uh, which are the ones which you would really like to see come to pass? Well, I, I tend to be an optimist in this. So what I would like to see is basically, I think uh, there needs to be a, a system that runs uh, economic affairs and business more like a biosphere in the sense, for example, like in an ocean, you can be a big fish, but you, you don't own the whole ocean. And so what we have, for example, now with, uh, with data-driven economies or so, is that we need to have a public benefit and a, and a private benefit at the same time. So what I would like to see happen is that we create a system that's much more transparent and equal and creates scenarios that, that basically help everyone and to solve global problems like, like food or water or terrorism, you need a global approach. So to create basically an understanding of what we want to achieve so that we can solve these large-scale problems. Uh, in comparison, for example, if you look at what's happening in California is, or in the States in general, is this idea of inventing some miraculous technology that a company can own, that everybody else can buy, that solves the problem. Right? For example, they want to build a space elevator to get energy from, from the solar system or so. Right? But this is all owned by companies and individuals. And I think what we need to see is basically there's collective problems to which we need collective answers. And, and that is a huge challenge in a, system, in a system where you get you get paid by what you make. So I would, my preferred future would be more collective in the sense of collective problem solving, collective intelligence, uh, rather than based on the in individual rewards. And how about you, your preferred futures? Very, very similar in that I think that there is a this idea of distributed value creation. How do we find ways in which individuals can contribute through their ideas, through their energy, through their insights, and to be able to get rewarded for that? And so uh, this is, we need some more mechanisms, this, uh, mechanisms or structures where we can say, these are the problems, these are the opportunities. Who has the ideas? What are efficient ways to be able to bring these all together to be able to create problems and solutions? So one of the challenges today is that Pharmaceutical companies only in invest the enormous amounts required for blockbuster drugs, ones which are, have you know, tens or hundreds of millions of potential users. Those that only have a small potential audience aren't developed. Yet so we can, if we can develop ways to be able to bring together the insights or the energy or the research around the world to be able to create that, there's probably ways where people can be very well rewarded for doing that and addressing problems, creating a better life for all of us. So I think this world where we can have this distributed value creation and insights and ideas coalesce to address problems and to create new opportunities is some which we really need to work hard to create. Yeah, I think that there's this, this constant uh, battle between open and close and between control and trust, you know, that we're seeing. And this is basically quite clear that control is very costly if you want to control things. And it won't solve a lot of problems. For example, the pharma companies are realizing if they stick with the control mantra and the uh, patent periods and all these things, they'll be way too slow to uh, get to market with stuff that's needed now, and they can't cover the, the rare diseases, uh, which are not worth paying attention to. So uh, GlaxoSmithKline already put some stuff into public domain to solve the issues of tropical diseases and stuff. Uh, so it's, it's a trade-off between control and trust and open and close. It's not either or. But as many companies like Google have proven that if you're, if you're open at a certain point, it's great because it gets things to move. 
and then you monetize by fencing off a little piece of it, you know, like the algorithm, search algorithm. Um, and this is, I think, an ongoing discussion. But my theory is that we're we're being forced to be networked because everything else will fail the speed uh, the speed that's required. So, anything on thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the network is we've discovered just in the last 20 years the networks are the fundamentals of so many layers of biology of the world around us of society of ideas and those network structures are the ones that will be able to solve the issues which we have so this brings us back to this idea of i describe as network leadership as in if we want to coalesce value across a network there are certain characteristics of people and organizations that can do that which amongst other things, believe in shared value and demonstrate the behaviors of creating value across the network. And this is a very different mentality and ethos that we see in a lot of organizational behavior uh, until today. Because there's a real problem with this, uh, the economic theory, like the, uh, the idea of Adam Smith kind of invisible hand free markets kind of concept basically means that uh, free markets will take care of it if there's a need for it to, to exist in the first place. But I think we can safely say the free market have completely failed to solve a lot of the large uh, issues like climate change. Right? There's no free market force that's going to change climate change because people don't make money with those other things. They make money with oil. Right? And so the free market has failed with music, with, uh, with the digital content economy, with publishing, with, uh, with oil and energy. Uh, to me, that basically means this idea of the invisible hand, the market fixing it, is not, is not going to work here because of speed and exp exponentiality. So you need a, a smarter approach to this that is actually suited to the speed of how things are developing in technology. Because technology is going like this, and it's exponential. So in, you know, from 4 to 8 to 16, while the human speed of, uh, you know, of, uh, of, of law, for example, laws are, are crawling along at the bottom. So we have a real disparity. I think this is a real issue for the economic framework. I get paid only by what I make for myself, not for what you make. But the reality is you can't distinguish the two. One of the big issues is the degree to which we can make this happen across national boundaries. So nation, currently nations is where the value is created and shared. Whatever way when we see that transcend national boundaries or what is looking beyond what is currently the, the nation state. Same, same debate in Europe, right? Yeah. Either we're going to have the United States, uh, States of Europe, which I think is inevitable, or everybody goes their own merry way. And, and that reality well, doesn't really exist. But you know, either we're all going to come together on these issues and solve them together, and, and that's that. And so to me, that, that's one of the key trends of realization is that if we're not networked, we're probably going to evaporate. Uh, because being by yourself basically means you're insular. So Luxembourg, uh, Switzerland, Austria, in terms of their positioning and the banking and stuff, you know, that's just totally unsustainable because it creates a vacuum. And, and if, either we're going to be in the same platform or we're not. It's, you can't be only, you know, you can't only be half pregnant. So this concludes today's episode of Meeting of the Minds. Thanks very much to Ross Dawson for being part of this today. If you want to know more about the show, you can go to meetingoftheminds.tv. We are also taking questions and inputs for the next show. Just use the Twitter hashtag Meeting of the Minds and we'll be responding and trying to work your comments into our next show. Thanks very much for joining us.